Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today I am here to make good on a promise. You see, the other day I told you that the Paradox Rift pre-releases had started. And I told you that I wasn't able to tell you what the most expensive cards were in the set or how much they were worth or anything along those lines because it was too early and the set wasn't out. And I told you guys that as soon as it wasn't too early and the set was out, I would come back and I would show you the most valuable, most expensive, call it what you will, cards from Paradox Rift and we'd have a good old chat about them. Well, that's today, ladies and gentlemen. We've had the weekend. The set is now out. Cars are out there in the wild, and we can have a chat about the most valuable, most expensive, most sought after, call it what you will, cards from Paradox Rift. Now before we get going properly, I do just want to give a shout out to a quartet of cards that don't make the list, but do come in at about $20 and are extremely cool. So you've got the full art and gold version of Roaring Moon, we're going to talk about this card more in a moment. But it's a very good card, seeing a bunch of play already. It's forecast to be one of the very best cards in the set, one of the best decks in the game. And both of these versions are very cool. The Tapu Kokoi X Special Illustration Rare is one of the absolute coolest looking cards in the game. Worlds is in Hawaii this coming year. And Alola was a great game, and this just makes me very happy. The fact this card is $20 makes me very happy. I want to get this card. I'm going to get this card. At least in English. Japanese will see. Although it's not terribly expensive over there either. Point is, great card. Phenomenal artwork. And don't be sniffing at 2 energy 120 if you had a Pokemon KO'd by damage during your opponent's last turn. Oh yeah, um, it's 120 plus paralysis, which, which is even a bigger deal again. I like Tapu Koko EX. I think it's cool. And then the special illustration rare of Tulip. We've got a trainer card done by Akira Igawa. Fantastic artist, doing great work in Pokemon and in One Piece. Hasn't done many trainer cards, but broke that here. Absolutely stunning card. Decent for Psychic decks, getting four in any combination of Psychic Pokemon and Psychic Energy from your discard pile into your hand. But mostly just stunning artwork. So if that's a quartet that didn't make it, what did? Well, in at number 10, we've got the special illustration rare of Altaria EX. And this is just a beautiful card. Also, I love that we've now got proper clear English scans, so we can just use proper clear English scans, and that makes me happy. Jiro Susumo knocking it out of the park with this absolutely beautiful card. We've got the ability Humming Heal. Heals 20 from each of your Pokemon. It's fine. Really, this is not a card that got here on playability. This is a card that got here on the artwork. It is a beautiful card, a stunning card, and it's one that a lot of people want in their binders. And that's why we see it on this list. Now, coming in at number 9, also at $25, we've got Parasol Lady. Now, this is going to happen a couple of times, where we have cards that I'm putting at the same price. At the moment, the prices are a little bit all over the place. It's a bit hard to pin down exactly. So, what I'm doing is I'm giving you a rough price to the nearest $5. Some of them are going to end up being tied. But I am making sure to look at TCG Player, eBay, a few other places, making sure that even if I'm listing them with the same price, I'm still making sure they're in the right order. Yes, I know Parasol Lady, I'm listing at $25 like Alteria, but generally does tend to sell for a little bit more. And that is one of the ones I actually pulled from, I believe, my Elite Trainer box, which was beautiful. And it's just the artwork here. Like playability-wise, shoving a hand into your deck, draw four cards. If it's your first turn, going second, draw eight instead. One turn every other game, it's going to be great. But this is just... Morikura here, I, I don't understand why this card is so good. Like, there's nothing about this card. Parasol Lady is not exactly a particularly popular character. And it's just somebody in the rain with a rainbow. And yet this card is one of the prettiest cards... We've seen for Pokemon. It's the only way I can describe it. This is a really pretty card. And maybe it's because I like going out in the rain with my kids to find rainbows. Maybe that's what does it for me with this card. All I can tell you is, it's amazing. I love it. And I'm delighted to have it in my binder. In at number 8, we got the special illustration rare of Garchomp, which is coming in at about $30. And I love the Kato artwork here. The Kato artwork makes me very happy indeed. Big fan of Oswaldo Kato. Also, follow them on Twitter, would you? Because some of the art they tweet out that's unrelated to Pokemon is phenomenal. 
Single Energy 160, attach up to free basic fighting from your discard party or bench Pokemon in any way you like. Pretty good. And then two energy, discard two, do 120 to one of your opponent's bench. And it's got free retreat. It's actually a really good Pokemon, but the lightning weakness is a bit awkward nowadays. Well, you do have very high HP, and it's a stage two, but it's still an amazing card, and it's kind of playable, and it's Garchomp, who's super popular. Put that all together, what do you get? One of the best cards in the set. Now, in at number 7, we've got Professor Sada's Vitality, which also comes in at about $30, but generally speaking, tends to sell for a little bit more. And this is another one of those cards where just everything about the card was always going to push it up to the most expensive cards of the set. Professor Sada, very, very popular. More popular than Professor Turo, who actually doesn't get anywhere near this list. And we saw this one, I showed you the Japanese prices the other day. I mean, Sada's more popular than Turo, admittedly. And the artwork, you can argue, is better. But Professor Turo is a really good card as well. It's the one that lets you put a Pokemon in play into your hand. Really good card. Definitely going to see a bunch of play. Just a reprint of a card that did see a bunch of play. But people like Sada more. The artwork's a bit better and it is as simple as that. I mean, you do get to choose two of your ancient Pokemon, attach a basic energy from your discard to each of them, and then draw three cards, as long as you attach at least one energy. Very good card. Gonna see a bunch of play. Is that that much difference between this and Turo? I'm gonna guess no, but this makes it and Turo doesn't. In at number six, at $35, we've got the special illustration rare of Mela, but I've got on my list, I've got a big old asterisk next to this one. Because this one has been all over the place. I've seen this down at like 20 and I've seen it up at about 60. So $35 I'm putting this as because that is about the average it tends to be selling at. But I, I just want on the record that of all the cards on this list, this is the only one where I'm just like that makes no sense. This one is weird to me. It has not been particularly straightforward. But I'm calling it $35. Let's leave it there. And it's Mela chilling on some steps of a Torkoal, which is beautiful. And Mela's very popular, which helps. But then you've got the whole, if a Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn, does not have to be by damage from an attack. Anyway, it's knocked out is fine. You attach a basic fire from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon, and then draw until you have six cards in your hand. It's going to be great for fire decks. Everyone loves Mela. There's a talk. Is talk all that popular? Probably not, honestly. This is just cool. In at number five, we've got Iron Hands EX, a special illustration rare thereof, at about $35. And this one, look, I love me some Pokemon cards, as you're all well aware, all right? I don't really like this artwork. This artwork does nothing for me. I don't think it's bad. I just think we've got so many. You know, look, look at the Altaria. Look at the Tapu Coco. Look at the Parasol Lady. Those are artworks I've already shown you in this video where I'm like, yes. I mean, to be fair, I love the Garchomp, and I'm sure some people look at the Garchomp and think it's a bit simple for a special illustration rare. I get all of that. It's just not my favorite. Also, was not very high up on the list over in Japan. This has certainly been inflated in the West, shall we say. But it's Iron Hands. Four energy, 120, and if you take a KO take an extra prize like it's clearly a ridiculous card it's seen a lot of play and success already in japan and in early kind of online tournaments over here people love this card all right but this is very much iron hands is not that popular as a pokemon and the artwork's all right but i don't think it's as good as some of the others i've shown you this is very very much a question of it's really good therefore that's why it's so high Coming in at number four, we've got Groudon. This happens every set. Every set, for some reason, I don't understand. The Pokemon fans, only in the West, not in Japan, pick a random artwork rare and go, that one. This is the one we're going to inflate the price of this set. No idea why. I mean, why not the Vanillish? That's just absolutely adorable. Why not that one? Or why not the Steelix? Brilliant artwork and I think a really interesting card. Why not the Porygon Z? Nope. Groudon. I don't really understand why. I mean, don't get me wrong. Groudon's a cool card. Looks really good. Great artwork by Nirakabe here. And obviously Groudon's popular. But there is no reason for this card to be this expensive. 
Like, Magma Purge is a fun little attack. Discard up to four energy from your Pokemon. 60 damage for each card you discarded in this way. I get it. But there is no reason for this Groudon to be this expensive. And I can say that because one of the things you, you can see a lot here. Look at Japanese sets. And generally speaking, our cards tend to be roughly the same price as Japanese cards. And I don't know, There's it's all over the place, but certainly the order seems to be similar. Let's put it that way. The most expensive cards in Japan are the most expensive cards here. The cards on this list, even if they're a little different from Japan, they're all basically the cards that are doing best over in Japan. It's why I can use the price of Japanese cards as a guide when I'm talking about this here. This makes no sense. Because if we have a look at Raging Surf over in Japan, do you think this Groudon's a particularly expensive card? No! No, it's not. It's like a £3 card. Like, it is, don't get me wrong, it is still a card which, you know, it's the most expensive of the artwork rares in Raging Surf, which the set it came from, but a $40 card? No, nah, mate, you're having a laugh. This is one of those ones that, I mean, look, every time this happens, I tell you this is going to be sorted out and is going to be fixed. But people are legit paying like this much for it. So, I don't know, $35. The last two sold on TCG Player were $36 as I look at it now. It, it doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. It seems wrong to me. There's no reason for this, but we seem to pick one every set. One random artwork rare and elevate it up. Apparently, we've done it again and we've done it with Garchomp. Why? I don't know. I just know we're going to do it again with sort of Garlet and Violet 5 because we always do. Never mind. In a number three, we got the special illustration rare of Goldengo and this one I get. Do bear in mind, this also makes a pair with the... Give me Ghoul artwork rare, the illustration rare, which that's the one. If you're going to pump one up, pump that one up. Uh, what we got with the Gold Engo here is the ability coin bonus. Once during your turn, you may draw a card, but if you're active, draw another. And the attack, make it rain, discard any number of basic energy from your hand, deal 50 for each one discarded. This is a card you can get excited about. Love this card. Great ability, great attack. Love that it makes a pair with Gimme Ghoul here. Really cool artwork by Komiyama. And yeah. If you're going to pump one up, pump this one up, would you? I mean, to be fair, it's been pumped up, all right? In at number two, we got Iron Valiant, the special illustration rare. Uh, one more example, and then I might retire saying this. This is a card Pokemon let me reveal officially in English, and I am delighted. But this is another one of those cards where you're like, oh, yeah, obviously it's number two. Obviously, this was going to be the one. Because firstly, the artwork is absolutely stunning. Yes, do remember that Iron Thorns is on there and that's not a card that's in the set. Iron Thorns is not in the set. Why is it on this if it's not in the set? Don't know, don't care, doesn't matter. But we've also got a ridiculous ability, Tachyon Bits. Let's you drop two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon when you go into the active, which is brilliant. The attack's fine, it's okay. And of course, we've got Future Boost Energy Capsule, which both gives you free retreat. Good. And means that you do an extra 20 damage, which puts your attack up to 220, which is actually really good. So that's kind of nice. And yeah, there is an awful lot to like about this card. It's the artwork, don't get me wrong. But one thing that's weird, neither the full art nor the gold came that close to this list. Whereas I've already showed you that for Roaring Moon, they did. There is a difference. Roaring Moon, the gold, and full art... Really did kind of come up here big. Not the same with Iron Valley. Not to say that they're like $2 cars or anything like that. But it is to say they are a fair bit lower than Roaring Moon. People think Roaring Moon is better. Oh, and incidentally, that's what we see up at number one. It's Roaring Moon. We've jumped from $60 to $100. This is number one by a bit of a margin. And it is a phenomenal card. Firstly, this might be the best artwork in the set. Like, I've raved about Parasol Lady. I've raved about Tapu Koko. This might be the best one. This absolutely might legit be the best one. But then we've also got a ridiculous card. Free energy, instant one hit KO on anything. Yay. Or free energy, 220 if you discard a stadium. Love the card. 
It's the special of the Paradox Pokemon from Scarlet. In the same way that Iron Valiant is for Violet. And it's just a phenomenal card with ridiculous artwork. And that kind of tells you everything you need to know. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I told you I'd come back and tell you what the most valuable cards were when we were in a position to say. We are in a position to say, I have come back and told you, and now it's over to you guys. Tell me which of these cards you pull. Tell me which card you want to pull. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join the Discord, all kinds of fun things. Oh, and get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Danger Morales, who's been a supporter of us for a while now and is a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.